Good morning. Today I'm going to read from the last book by Ivan Doig, Montana Legend. The Last Bus to Wisdom is the title. Uh, I have a good story about the first time I met Mr. Doig. Uh, my first novel was just about to come out. And uh, my publisher told me I needed to find some blurbs, get some blurbs for it. And I didn't know how to go about that. So they told me, well, just go to some readings and introduce yourself to writers and ask them if they're willing to read your book. And um, I was living in San Francisco at the time, so I saw that Mr. Doig was coming to do a reading. And um, so I went to Clean Well Lighted Place for Books, a place I miss very much. But um, anyway, I was I called my mom to tell her that I was going to go listen to Mr. Doig talk. And um, she's a big fan. So she said, oh, well, make sure you tell him, tell him that uh, he worked for my cousin. And I was like, what? And it turned out he was a ranch hand for one of my mom's cousins on a ranch up near White Sulphur Springs. And uh, she said, yeah, they used to say that he was the worst ranch hand they ever had because he never worked. He was always reading. <laughs> so... Uh, I left that part out, but I did tell him that uh, he worked for my mom's cousin Jean, and he was he was a very sweet man. So um, the last bus to wisdom, I uh, I always was kind of hit or hit or miss with Mr. Doig's books. I hate to say that, but um, I th I loved the uh, trilogy, the House of Sky and English Creek and um, Dancing at the R Rascal Fair. Um, some of his books just didn't do it for me. So I was really nervous when the local paper here asked me to review this last novel. I was worried I wouldn't like it, but I really love this book. I think it's a, it was a delightful way for him to end his career. So this is the first few pages of The Last Bus to Wisdom. The town of Gravant was so far from anywhere that you had to take a bus to catch the bus. At that time, remote locales like ours were served by a homegrown enterprise with more name than vehicles, the Rocky Mountain Stage Line and Postal Courier in the form of a lengthened Chevrolet sedan that held 10 passengers besides the driver and the mailbag, and when I nervously went to climb in for the first time ever, the Chevy bus was already loaded with a ladies' club heading home for an outing to Glacier National Park. The only seat left was in the back next to the mailbag, sandwiched between it and a hefty gray-haired woman clutching her purse to herself as though stage robbers were still on the loose in the middle of the 20th century. The swarm of apprehensions nibbling at me had not included this. Sure enough, no sooner did we pull out for the Greyhound station in Great Falls than my substantial seatmate leaned my way enough to press me into the mailbag and ask in that tone a voice a kid so much dreads, and where are you off to all by your lonesome? How things have changed in the world. I see the young people of today traveling the planet with their individual backpacks and weightless independence. Back then on the epic journey that determined my life and drastically turned the course of others, I lived out of my grandmother's wicker suitcase and carried a responsibility bigger than I was. <clears throat> many, many miles bigger, as it turned out. But that lay ahead, and meanwhile I heard myself pipe up with an answer neither she nor I was ready for. Pleasantville, I said. When she cocked her head way to one side and said she couldn't think where that was, I hazarded, it's around New York. To this day, I wonder what made me say any of that. Maybe the colorful wall map displaying Greyhound routes, coast to coast, the Fleetway, back there in the hotel lobby that doubled as a Gravant bus depot stuck in my mind. Maybe my imagination answered for me, like being called on in school utterly unready and a whisper of help arrives out of nowhere, right or not. Maybe the truth scared me too much. 
Whatever got into me, one thing all too quickly led to another, as the woman clucked in concern and expressed, That's a long way to go all by yourself. I'd be such a bundle of nerves. Sizing me up in a way I would come to recognize, as if I were either a very brave boy or a very ignorant one, she persisted. What takes you so awful far? Oh, my daddy works there. Isn't that interesting? And what does he do Where in, where is it? Pleasantville? It's funny about imagination, how it can add to your peril even while it momentarily comes to your rescue. I had to scramble to furnish. Yeah, well, he's a digester. You don't say. Wait till I tell the girls about this. Her alarming exclamation had the other ladies busy gabbing about mountain goats and summertime snowbanks and other memorable attractions of Glacier National Park, glancing over their shoulders at us. I shrank further into the mailbag, but my fellow passenger dipped her voice to a confidential level. Tries out food to see if it agrees with the tummy, does he? She endorsed enthusiastically, patting her own. I'm glad to hear it, she rushed on. So much of what a person has to buy comes in cases these days, cans these days. I've always thought they should have somebody somewhere testing those things on the digestion. That awful succotash about does me in before they let any of it in the stores. Good for him. Bobbing her head in vigorous approval, she gave the impression she hadn't, she wouldn't mind that job herself, and she certainly had the capacity for it. Uh, actually, maybe I should have, but I couldn't let go of my own imaginative version of the digestive process. It's books he does that to, at the Reader's Digest place. Thanks, everyone. That's Last Bus to Wisdom. I've been doing.